through the advancements in technology, even the poorest of the poor have access to the world of opportunities. They have access to information in a way never, ever before possible. These people are now connected to the information age. And information is power. There's a, this great quote from Francis Maud. He says, open data can be a raw material for economic growth, just like iron and coal were to the industrial revolution. We have left the industrial age. We are now in the information age and data is that fuel. That's Mike Baird in the top left corner, looking concerned. And that's me in the bottom right corner, looking equally concerned. Fast forward uh, to 2015, and on the 2nd of April, Mike gives me a call. I don't think he was outside at the time, but he was definitely giving me a call on the phone. And he was asking me to be the first minister for innovation in New South Wales. Now, to be honest, I didn't even know what that meant because it, it was the first of its kind. I thought, you know, what are you, what are you talking about? And he said, look, your job, if you choose to accept it, is to digitise the New South Wales government and collaborate with the public sector to drive better outcomes for the people of New South Wales. And I, you know, I thought, yeah, innovation in government, well, that is definitely mission impossible. So what I did uh, when I came to the role about four months ago, I surveyed, I did what all good ministers uh, did. I looked at, did a sort of a SWOT analysis and I looked for our strengths. And it was clear to me that as a result of a lot of hard work done over the last four years, New South Wales is undoubtedly the number one state in Australia. We have a robust performances in all the major sectors, including construction, mining, education, tourism, agriculture, and of course, banking and finance. But underneath the headline stories of our economic success also sits our thriving digital economy, which I know is something that you're all acutely aware of. Now, in order for the digital economy to flourish, we need meaningful collaboration between government and industry. And I'd like to commend my cabinet colleagues for work already underway to boost the technology sector including the work of my colleague Anthony Roberts with Knowledge Hubs and other initiatives to work with industry to improve productivity. The Premier has also made a personal commitment to engage with the digital ecosystem through the Premier's Innovation Initiative and, of, and of course, he has charged me uh, with the lead in relation to the First Minister responsible for innovation in this state. We've also got Digital Plus the most recent iteration of the New South Wales government ICT strategy. Now, that reform program kicked off in 2012, and it's known to many of you here tonight. And it has delivered significant achievements in the last three years, including supporting better customer services through Service New South Wales being strongly led by my colleague Dominic Perrottet. We've got a world-leading data centre in GovDC, and that's a powerhouse in its own right a dedicated focus on open data and the principles of open government, and reforms to procurement processes to make it easier to do businesses or business with government. And while we're on this topic, as we have seen in previous years, uh, we'll be seeking your input to the next phase of the ICT strategy to be announced later this year. An open call for your ideas on key themes for the next iteration will go out live tonight on the Gov's Have Your Say website, which I encourage you to participate in. We also have a digital council established under the leadership of Mike Pratt, the Customer Service Commissioner, to bring business leaders from across government together to reimagine the delivery of public services. And over the next few months, the digital council will be looking to work with industry to achieve this goal. There is also valuable data analytics work being undertaken by individual agencies right across the New South Wales government. In health, we've got Cheryl. Uh, the Centre for Herald, uh, Health Record Linkage. In education, we have CSE, the Centre for Education, Statistics and Evaluation. In crime, we have BOXAR, the Bureau of Crime Statistics and Research, and that's just to name a few. But you may ask the question, is there more to do? And the obvious answer is yes. 
The biggest challenge is that governments have a 20th century approach to the use and sharing of data. Data is held in agency silos and there are over 140 different agencies in the New South Wales government alone. The heavy handbrake of bureaucracy means that the whole of government data sharing and analytics is stifled. We all know about Henry Ford and his famous quote last century regarding mass production and a one size fits all approach. But government can't afford to think this way. As a government, we must and we must become more customer centric in the 21st century. And this means we must be agile, faster and smarter in the way we operate. We need to harness our data assets to deliver better tailored services. In doing so, we need to collaborate with the private sector to bring new thinking and new ideas to government. Now, through my initial discussions with both the public and the private sector, including many of you here tonight, key themes became very apparent in terms of what more needed to be done. I realised that in order to harness our data assets, we needed a centralised agency with the capacity to aggregate and analyse whole of government data from state-owned corporations, from every New South Wales government agency and from each and every local council here in New South Wales. The goal? To gain greater insights and tackle the complex challenges that our society faces. So tonight, for the first time publicly, I'm proud to announce that the New South Wales Government will establish a whole of government data analytics centre, the first of its kind in New South Wales. At this stage, we affectionately refer to it as the DAC. It sounds so Australian, the DAC. Now the DAC, now what's this DAC gonna do? Well, the DAC's gonna be tasked with the following responsibilities. Now I want you to tick these off in your own head because many of you tonight have said, we want something that does all of these things. Now you tell me if I've ticked off on your wish list. The DAC will uh, be responsible for collecting and analysing whole of government data in relation to approved projects. The DAC will be coordinating consistency of definitions and data standards across New South Wales government agencies. That alone is a major feat and something that needs to be done. Getting, you know, getting some detail, getting some quality around the data so that we can feed it into places like this. What else will the DAC do? It will establish and maintain a register of data assets in government and provide advice to government on the greater publication of open data. The DAC will also provide advice on how data can inform the digitisation of the New South Wales government and how the New South Wales government can support the digital ecosystem. And importantly, the DAC will investigate and establish processes and in methodologies to enable the protection of personal information. And the DAC will advise the New South Wales Government on best practice analytic processes and data information security. Not only will this significantly facilitate and expedite data linkages within government, it will also in time provide a central point, a one-stop shop, if you will, for those seeking access to data and analytics in New South Wales. With all of these functions centralised in one place, not only will the DAC be the first of its kind in Australia, to the best of our knowledge, it will be the first of the kind, its kind in the world. It will be an environment where researchers, startups, companies and the NGO sector can work directly with experts from government. The DAC will be able to interface with the New South Wales digital ecosystem in a significant way to gain insights and reduce some of the great public challenges that we have. For example, in areas such as crime prevention, in childhood obesity, in pollution, in sustainable urban planning, and the list goes on and on and on. Governments right around the world spend enormous resources in trying to solve these challenges, but primarily 
they do so in a piecemeal way. What the DAC will provide is an ability for industry and researchers to interface with government in a one-stop shop environment to solve some of these very complex issues. The possibilities are truly endless. The DAC will be located initially within Department of Finance Services and Innovation. And I'd just like to take this moment to uh, thank the team there, uh, William Murphy, Dawn Rutledge, Kate, uh, Harrington, and the broader team for their absolutely Herculean efforts in bringing this project together with the priority it deserves. And I, I should also have a shout out for Katie Mc, McLaughlin in my uh, ministerial office, who has also worked tirelessly, feverishly over the last four months. Now, the design team. To ensure that the DAC fulfills on its promise, we recognise that it is important to get critical stakeholders involved in the design phase, you know, at the ground floor. For this purpose, we have assembled a steering committee, which includes Mike Pratt, the New South Wales Customer Service Commissioner. Because at the end of the day, this is all about improving the services we provide to the citizen of our state here in New South Wales. We have Professor Mary O'Kane, the New South Wales Chief Scientist and Engineer. Uh, Professor O'Kane is a very passionate advocate of the power of data to do things differently. We have Liz Tidd, the New South Wales Information Commissioner, who briefed us all, uh, whose brief is already extends to making New South Wales data open and available for use by the community. And of course, we have Dr Elizabeth Coombs, the New South Wales Privacy Commissioner. Now, the role of Dr Coombs is of course essential. Her involvement will ensure that the development of the DAC has privacy as one of its core design principles. While we recognise the value of joining up data and bringing people together to develop new insights, the need to protect the privacy of individuals and the security of their information is absolutely not negotiable. In fact, the DAC will strengthen privacy in New South Wales by making it a key design element of this initiative. We are very, very blessed here in Sydney to be uh, the beating heart of Australia's digital ecosystem. This incredible facility, the UTS Data Arena, is just part of the world-class education and research infrastructure that is located here in New South Wales. For those who have seen the data arena, you will know what I'm talking about. And for those who haven't, I encourage you to look at it later in uh, tonight. Bringing data sets together in 3D, real time, taps into that basic human skill, developed over millennia to make visual sense of the world and see things we didn't expect to see. In fact, if you want to see tomorrow today, Step inside the data arena now. With the number of world-class research and educational facilities here in New South Wales, looking at data analytics, we owe it to the people of our state to bring this vibrancy and innovation into the delivery of public services. In turn, I hope that the working with this government can be a catalyst for new and exciting developments to take the technological capability of New South Wales to the very front stage of the world. What is our vision? With the DAC, we now have an even stronger vision for New South Wales in the 21st century, in the information age, in the main game. Over two thirds of Australia's startup communities makes it the home, makes its home right here in Sydney, including incubators and accelerators like Fishburners, Blue Chili, Stone and Chalk, uh, Polonize ATP Innovations, and Lakiba, to name just a few. We also have some of the most well-known digital businesses around, including GoCatch, Freelancer, Shoes of Prey, and GoGet. Sydney-based Atlassian and Society One were once startups here but are now mature, successful international tech companies. An increasing number of multinationals uh, with, who are now technology giants are establishing a substantial presence here in New South Wales, including Amazon, Google, Apple, and Uber, in addition to Microsoft, 
Fujitsu, IBM, SAP, Oracle, have, who have long time ago seen Sydney and New South Wales as a core of technology and innovation in Australia. Now, I've recently learnt that Google, Microsoft, Apple and SAP alone employ nearly 6,000 people in New South Wales already. Now, I want to just put all of this in context, in context and why I am super passionate about this space. Apart from its extraordinary capacity to change lives in a way that we've never seen before, in a, at a pace we've never contemplated before, it has also got a great role to play when it comes to the biggest thing on, on political minds, jobs. Jobs, 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 jobs. You know, think about just some of these key stats. Globally, uh, Google, a $360 billion market capitalization and over 53,000 employees. Amazon, 175 billion, 150,000 employees. Microsoft, 340 billion and over 128,000 employees. SAP, 90 billion and, 70, and 74,000 employees. Uber, a company, Uber just came onto our, our page, as it were, just the other day. It's a company valued at up to 50 billion in 58 countries, 300 cities since 2009. In New South Wales, we want a bigger slice of that pie, and that's why we're establishing the DAC. That's why we have a very bold vision to be a world leader in this space. I want New South Wales to be known as the tech hub of the Asia Pacific. And my intention is that the DAC will be a cornerstone in achieving this vision. The DAC will be an enabler. It will enable the New South Wales to become a competitive digital ecosystem. It will provide a very mature approach to problem solving. It will extend beyond the siloed mentality of government and it will invite industry to collaborate with government experts to achieve meaningful outcomes. The DAC is not just about spending a whole lot of money. It's about using our assets collaboratively to ensure a more targeted use of our precious finite resources. Let's make no mistake, this is a very ambitious, bold reform agenda designed to deliver. We must be bold. Big data and analytics has been around for decades in the corporate sector. Governments around the world are now just starting to wake up to the benefits. And if we do nothing here in New South Wales, then that in itself will be a cost to our people. We can't afford to be left behind. If in New South Wales we harness data for the greater public good, the DAC will result in a genuinely tectonic shift. The DAC will enable us to see tomorrow, today, but in far, far greater focus. So thank you very much for coming tonight.